Good evening, everyone. This is the uh, first class of the um, Moore's History and Etymology course at the Temple University Pan-African Studies Community Education Program known as PASEP. Um, today, we, we always, I always begin with the, uh, the first class with an overview of what etymology is, what Moore's History is. So I'm going to do an overview of my uh, etymology, and we're going to look at my name up here, Tula Bay, my number. Website up, back up. Masonry. Not work. True meaning, it means. True meaning, it meaning. Now we, we've all heard meaning. This word means this. What is the meaning of this word? What is the meaning of color? What is the meaning of, of, uh, of, of nice? What is the meaning of chair? What is the, you know, I'm going to a dictionary to look up the meaning of this word or that word and so forth. But we never heard, we, we don't hear this in school and at the workplace, at restaurants. You never hear people say, what is the true meaning of the word nice? What is the true meaning of the word slave? What is the true meaning of the word color? You know, I'm going to go to the dic dic dictionary to look up the true meaning of this word, you know. We never hear true meaning. What's, what is true meaning? What's the difference between true meaning and meaning? What's the difference? Wouldn't they be the same? What's this true meaning about? Aren't all meanings true meanings? What are you talking about, Abdullah, Brother Bay? What's the difference? All right. We have etymology. That's from the Greek. It's from the Greek. Meaning, all right, the true is this here means true, real, origin. All right. Word, theory. Study of all right. Real true, real meaning, true, real origin and history. So etymology is the history, origin, true meaning of words. All right, so we have here. This so here, so we have over here semantics. This is the study of meaning. The study of this. This deals with the study of meaning. This is the, the study of 
the history, origin, and true meaning of words. That's the difference. This is a study, history, study of the history, origin of two meaning words. Semantics is the study of meaning. So, this is, so you have two different fields and they have two different objectives. Objectives are not the same. So for this, let's look at slave. So let's look at between, what's the difference between etymology and semantics? That will deal with methodology. The difference is in the methodology. The methodology is different. The methodology for an etymologist and looking at the word slave, well, tracing the word back to its oldest known historical meaning. It's true meaning and looking at how that word has been transliterated in other languages and how the cognizance to that word, that word, you know, what, what is the form of the word in the various languages. Whereas semantics, semanticists will look at how various meanings came about what the word given to this word, slave. So we have the word slave here. The so semantics is not so much concerned with the history and origin and true meaning of the word. We're going to concern with how the word slave, in this case slave, acquired its various meanings. How the word slave acquired its, acquired its various meanings. A semantic, a etymologist is not concerned with how a word acquired its various meanings. A semanticist wants to know what is the oldest historically known meaning, what is the true meaning of the word? What is the true meaning of the word? Not its various meanings, you know, over the period of time here. So let's say semanticist's approach would be we want to look at the word slave over the period of 500 years. So let's say 500 years time period. And we want to we want to study the when particular meanings came about for the word slave or for any word when at what time period so let me see the dictionary about explaining the difference it's on the page well it doesn't matter what word it is it have to, it's, it's, it's dealing with the all right so we're looking at the entry level meanings we have your entry level meanings your entry level meanings would be, all right, they're, they're numbered, one, two, it could have five, five. entry could be seven, 15, 20, all right? Then it's close to there may be other entries that a, a group of lexographers, those who put together dictionaries, 
did not put in there because they don't put all the entries in depending on what dictionary you're looking at they have the, if they had the funding to do that you know you may have Oxford got Webster's got Funk and Wagno all right so you have these various dictionaries and you have various people with there these various Groups have different funding. That's also a factor. So the entry may have three to maybe five or ten. So semantics is we look at these various entries. I said, well, when did this these various entries come about? Was this 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 meeting came about two hundred years ago? Or this one came five, four, 400 years ago, and this meaning came about, and you know, and, uh, back in, in 1600, it meant this. Back in, you know, 1800, it meant this. Back in, all right? Where semanticists and etymologists approach is, what is this? It's, 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 it's earliest known meaning. What is this earliest? It's earliest. It's oldest. It's historical. True meaning. So these are different methodologies. There's different goals and objectives. Different approaches. Different focus. I implore that you study both. I study both, and I've been studying both for years. And I've been studying you because I this was introduced to me by Professor Burton, semantics, because he would we would look at the semantical uh, classification of various verbs or prepositions, and not so. You often hear people say, you know, you're speaking in semantics. What they, that means, you're speaking semantics, they haven't studied semantics. You're speaking semantics. You'll hear people say that, but yet they haven't studied it in depth or studied it all. They probably have heard people say that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the difference in approaches with etymology and semantics, the study of the meaning of words, the study of the history, origin, and true meaning of words, Any questions, Amanda? Mm -hmm. Questions? Comments? All right. Is it clear? Yes. All right. This is a second round go around for you, but you're going to get more out of it because you already had a, found, a foundation of having gone through the first session. Now that you've gone through that, you're looking at this, and I'm going to, you know, expand and make a connection because this is key to study. This will take you a long way. This will aid in discerning deceptions, colors. Color means deception, misleading, artificial. Forward. So let's continue. I'm erase this. I need the space. Mm -hmm. Tonight I dream I'm like I want to be like mine. <laughs> All right, there, there are scholars who define denotation in three ways. There's three, these are the three main definitions that are given for denotation. I'm going to look at, okay. Coming. 
Oh, wow. Sorry, I'm I just said. Sorry, I'm late. I just said, as you opened the door, I looked at the clock and said, I guess she's not coming. And I slowed down because I heard the door. I went to the old building. Right. Oh, you went to Anderson Hall. Yeah, whatever that's called. Anderson Hall. On, on Bourne Street? Yeah. Oh, that's not Anderson Hall. Oh, bookstore. Yeah, oh, about a bookstore? Oh, I've never, I never been in that building. Oh, okay. I've always been in this class. Well, I was in the class over there, like two semesters. Oh, okay. well, it's been a couple of years. So yes, so I've always, this has been, since we moved from Anderson Hall, I've been, they never oh. put me in another building. All right? Wow, you all um, missed the uh, lesson on etymology and um, difference between etymology and semantics. Uh, yeah, difference between etymology and semantics. I just gave that um, lesson. Uh, there are scholars who define denotation in three ways. All right, so scholars define denotation as so we have some we have some scholars that define denotation as one established as established meaning Others, others who define it as dictation, status meaning, dictionary meaning, dictionary meaning, and there's some who just define it as the literal meaning. All right. D here, established meaning. This is a past participle. There's a D. I got to put the D here because this is established is a verb form. A past participle is a verb form that ends in ing or en or t, all right, that functions as an adjective, all right? That's what's called a past participle. So that's why I just had to put the D there. Right. So what does this mean? When I read this, looked at looking at different, maybe over 45 different definitions that um, scholars for the definition of uh, denotation. This is what they, you have one or the other, you have one. Yes. Be, these are the three common ones. Actually, those are the three that I've only seen established me. Now you can, what do they mean by established me? What is meant by established meaning? What is meant by dictionary meaning? All right, so let me start here. I'm just going to start with dictionary meaning. What do scholars mean by denotation being the dictionary meaning? All right, so let's use the word um, let's use the word color. Look up the word color. You said color? Yeah, color. C-O-L-O-R. -O oh. All right, color. So the word is color. So denotation, scholars define denotation as the dictionary meaning. So let's analyze that. Let's analyze what these scholars mean by denotation being defined as dictionary meaning.
were of color. We had the etymological brackets. Etymological brackets. You want me to read it? Yes. The aspect of things that is caused by differing qualities of light reflected or emitted by them, definable in terms of the observer or of the light. That's one definition. Um, the appearance of objects or light sources as perceived by the individual and involving hue, lightness, and saturation for objects and hue, brightness, and saturation for light sources. Uh, another definite, well. Third entry, third entry. The third entry. The general appearance of the skin, complexion, ruddy complexion, reddening of the face, blush, Number four is a skin pigmentation of a person not categorized as white. I'm going to stop there. Okay. All right. So scholars will say the notation is the dictionary meaning. So she read four entry, entries for the word color. So my, so you would say they, these scholars are saying that the denotation for the word color, all right, color is a, the dictionary meaning. So when you went to a dictionary and you had four entries. So scholars will say, well, that's the denotation of the word. All right, all right. Well, in here, read this. Read the entry level, wait till you. Show you. What's the word color? Oh, yeah. See how that's the the the, uh, in map, the um, Indo-European group because it's something here. Let's go back here. The, the, the Indo-European group section. Um. This is the Indo-European group section. All right. Mm -hmm. K E L. Mm-hmm. K E L. So we'll look up. Find K. Find K E L. Find K E L. K E L. Mm -hmm. To cover, conceal, oh, save. The, to cover, conceal. Yeah. Now does all right. Now let's look at it. So we have here to cover. Conceal. Now, what these these definitions? That's this definition have to do with the four entry you read. It says some about light and totally pigmentation and yeah, we, we cause complexion and they had all of that sent that to that light spectrum and what does that have to do with conceal? The cover. The hide. Because we have others that will have to so hide too. Hide, cover, conceal. So put hide here as well. So what do you have to what does what does these entries have to do that you read have to do with this? This is the etymology of the word. This is the true meaning. Of the word color. Yeah, so you have here semantics, sis. So this deals with semantics right here. That deals with semantics. This is etymology. So you may deal with that. That's what semantics is deal with. So, but scholars will call this, scholars will call what you read denotation. Denotation. All right, let's look at then he has the scholars that define denotation as the established meaning. I'm going to use the word color. I'm going to use the same word. 
What do they mean by established meaning? This is what they mean by established meaning. That means stand out or out of. Two thousand nineteen, let's say from two thousand to two thousand nineteen, the year. So we have this word color. So they'll ask you, they'll say, Well, Brother Bay. To cover, conceal, and hide would not be the established meaning. Well, what, do you, what do you mean it's not the established meaning? Well, that's not the meaning that everybody knows today. Right, see, but I'm saying, see, but it's misleading. It's deceiving. Because you're defining established, so you're you're saying that a the original meaning of a word is not the established meaning. Are you saying established meaning like popular meaning? Thank you. Okay. What they mean by established meaning? That's not what I'm saying. What established meaning is? I'm talking about what these scholars are calling established meaning. Uh, these scholars are calling established meaning as you popular. There you go. Popular. Current. Current. Thank you. What other words you could use here? Common. 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 And was that? Oh, we're gonna, look, we're gonna analyze that too. We're gonna analyze that too. So popular, current, common. So this is what we they so this is so question is question this class is designed this is designed for you to facilitate thinking thinking how to think that's the key how to think so when you're reading your generating question you're going to slow your reading down Slow your reading down and ask questions. All right? What is meant by established meaning? Who is defining this word established meaning? And why isn't the original meaning of a word the established meaning? Didn't that come first? And anything that came afterwards, a five dollar year old meaning has been established. That's established. It's, 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 it's established. So, but what they mean by established is what? Popular, current, common. But who is defining established meaning? Who is defining this as popular, current, common? Charlie Rose said of the Charlie Rose Show in 2009, when they're talking about the Iliad case, the Cuban boy. During the course of the show, Charlie Rose said, because the issue was a language, Charlie Rose said, whoever defines the language controls the issue. Who is defining this? Who is determining that the original meaning is not the established meaning? That the established meaning is what? The current meaning, the popular meaning, the common meaning. And that the meaning for 
color, that meaning that they just meaning co cover to cover to conceal or to hide for the word color is not the established meaning. The established meaning is what she read. Now I would question that. Whoever defines the language controls the issue. They're controlling the issue by what? Defining this as popular, current, and common. The question is, what's the motive? Why are they gearing people away from the original meaning of the word? Society changes. Well, who said? Well, does it? Question everything. Does it change? Or it's or civilization's been conquered? Does society change on its own? I say you say society changes. Society changes. Does it? Or lands have been conquered. Ancient fertility statues have been what? Uprooted. Ancient sites have been dismantled. It's not changing on its own. Invasion, conquest, supplanting the original, you know, taking people into captivity, taking children away from the parents, teaching them the invaders language we just say society changes but we're not analyzing you know details methods of invasion how that's what why is this so what are they covering up what do they don't want you to know why are they Keeping you away from the original meaning. Why are they downplaying the importance of the original meaning? And saying society changes, because that's what they do. And you accept it. You accept that they say a society changes. It's 2019. It ain't it ain't 1509. It ain't 500, it ain't 4,000 uh, 4, BC. It's 2019. You're talking about 4,000 BC, Abdullah. Man, 4,000 BC, four, 6,000 years ago. Man, you got to get on the ball, man. You, man, you living talking about 6,000 years ago. <laughs> man, how that going to help us today? See? We're in survival mode. Someone is what? Controlling your life and controlling your birthright. Someone is controlling your inheritance. Someone is controlling your reality. Someone is con is orchestrating how you see things. How you you're orchestrating your worldview. Hmm. So. Say, well, think outside the box. Why you didn't even know that there's a box? Do you think outside of? Think outside the box. You don't even know that there's a box. So someone is what? Creating what? Alright, so what does define mean? Alright, let's look at it. Hey, we, hey, I came here to teach. <laughs> so you look at that here. Fine. That word finish, limit. Limit. So boundaries. So when you're defining, you're what? Creating boundaries for that word. When you're defining a word, I said, well, this word means this. So there's a there's a boundary to that. 
There's a jurisdiction. Nothing outside of that. It does. It means this and nothing outside of that. It means this and nothing outside. Nothing else enters into this. But then who is creating the boundary? What body of people is creating the boundary? I know you got me. That's there, all right. I hear that. But who created the boundary? And why was the boundary created? Epistemology, how one knows knowledge. Epistemology. Epistemology, a branch in philosophy. Now this one, how one knows knowledge. How one knows knowledge. Branch of philosophy that's taught here. Uh, question so boundary. Questions. Comment. Um, the word Kel is meaning that's an that's a yeah, that's an Indo-European root. Let me that's that's the that's an Indo-European root. Because I know a lot of words come from Latin. That's Sanskrit. The Indo-European root means san Sanskrit. That's an Indo-European root. Oh, okay. This is an Indo-European root. Which is and, much older than... Yeah. Greek. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. This is Indo-European. Hmm. Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones studied at, at the University of Calcutta in 1717. And after... A, Upon studying at the University of Calcutta, he put together the the NSA system. This language classification. Oh, okay. And Sanskrit is one of those. Yes, yeah, Sanskrit is the foundation of these. Okay. okay. And this here. Is the in the European roots. And the American Heritage Dictionary. All right, because it's not in every dictionary. It's in the American Heritage Dictionary. Alright? So this Amer Indo European root, Indo, let me explain. Sindhu, that's Sanskrit. Hindus, let me put here, let me put the S here, let me put the S here, so that's what's removed. Hindu, I'll put here, put this here. H. Put that here. Hindu. So that, see this? So that's where it starts from. This is this is Sanskrit form. This is the Arabic nice. This is Arabic. That's Sanskrit, this is Arabic, this is modern English. When the Moors, there's a book called Medieval, Medieval India, Medieval India under Mohammedan rule by Stanley Poole. Medieval India on the Muhammadan rule 713 to 713 to 7 uh, 70, 763 713 to 1763 
when the Moors controlled modern day India, a lot of the Sanskrit words and Persian words were transliterated to Arabic, or they were Arabicized. And you have what today call a lot of Muslims in India because of that. A lot of Muslims, they call Muslims in India because of the Moorish rule, all right, for a thousand years. Don't that, so a lot of Arabic words, so the word, so the Sanskrit word is Sindhu, transliterated to Hindu. When the British took over in 1763, they transliterated to India, Hindu. So Indo-European, Sir Walter Jones, studied at the University of Calcutta in 1717. He developed that system after studying, so showing that there's a connection to these, we developed families of languages, language families, Latin languages, all right, showing a connection to Sanskrit. That's why it's called Indo, he called it Indo-European root. All right, so this is an Indo-European root. Our Indo-European root for color is kale. That's the Indo-European root. And that means high, color means high, conceal, or cover having nothing to do with complexion. Nothing to do with light. Nothing to do with the light spectrum. Nothing to do with crayons. <laughs> what color is this? That's what's called, that's a popular meaning or connotation. So these so this is this is misleading. This is misleading. Because I'm looking, as I'm reading the definition that these scholars are given for denotation. Yeah, denotation, the dictionary meaning. All right, let's go on your phone. Go on your phone. In fact, so Amanda, look up denotation. Let me look at the notation. And then also go on your phone. Everyone go on your phone. Just look up look up look up the look up the meaning for denotation. Not the etymology of it. Just look up the meaning for denotation. 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 Meaning, the notation. Here we go. So we have some scholars. Here we go. Here's one. The literal or primary meaning of words. So we have some scholars that say literal mean the literal or primary meaning of words, in contrast to the feelings or ideas that a word suggests. The literal or primary. So once again, literal. And yeah, some that's just fine. Let's continue. We'll say some. We'll say dictionary meanings. Now. The explicit or direct meaning or set of meanings of a word. Here it is, another one. Dictionary denotation is generally defined as literal or dictionary meaning of a word. Once again, denotation is generally defined as literal or dictionary meaning of a word. It's dictionary meaning of words. Aren't these in dictionaries? The meaning that you read for color? They dictionary? When you say the dictionary meanings? Yeah. Well, what about this? What is about this etymology? So let's look at. Two more definitions. You'll see, you'll see here. Let's look at the uh, see meaning again. Here it is. Denotation is a translation of a sign to its meaning, pre precisely to its literal meaning, more or less likely 
more or less like dictionaries try to define it. Here we go. Denotation is a translation of a sign to its meaning, precisely to its literal meaning, more or less like dictionaries try to define it. So we're going to how dictionaries try to define it. Try, and we and we can use one word, but your methodology does the same. I can take put color here. I can put slave here. I can put the word nice here. I can put any word here. We do the same methodology to analyze it. Doesn't matter what word I put here. You're going to follow the same methodology. Color, nice. You go to etymological brackets. Then you go look at the entry level meanings and you hmm, and you compare. So, oh, huh. it's a dictionary meaning, established meaning, literal meaning. So they're, they're defining. So scholars are saying that the entry level meanings are the dictionary meanings. That denotation. That these are the denotations. These are the literal meanings. These are the established meanings. So therefore, this is denotation. For nice, for slave, for color, for whatever word you throw. Give me a million, give me, give me what? A hundred thousand words. Give me a hundred thousand words. I'll also use the same approach. You wanna give me three hundred thousand? Give me three hundred thousand words. Same approach. They gonna all they gonna say what? Dictionary meaning? Literal meaning? No, denotation. Yeah, that's the dictionary meaning. See, that's the established meaning of the word. Why, though? Why are you in this box? I get out. I get out of all the boxes. I get out. Now I'm here. No one freedom. Get me out of the box. I get out of the box. We gotta get out the box. We gotta think out the box. Gotta get out the box. Someone created the box for us. So we don't think outside of that. So you can never so I heard someone say to me two years ago, as I was explaining to them, like if I was front in front of the pen, safety you know, the clothes pen, you know, City Hall, City for City Hall. And I've known this brother for years, and he tried to convince me and this other brother that he's free thinking, that he don't need that analogy to open up his mind. All he needs to do is just pray, just meditate. By meditating. And I say no, I say no, brother. No. Because you're not going to think outside of the connotative meanings. Your, your mind, whatever word you say, whatever you think, you're not going to think outside of that. You're not gonna you're not gonna meditate outside of that box. How do you wanna meditate? Meditate how that outside of the box? It's like you're you, remember, you you're talking about from the womb, not childhood. Not childhood. They don't start in childhood. It starts with your mother's mind. Let's start there, there. It started with his mother's mind before conception. Hmm. You always go. We start with start with the womb. No, don't start there. It doesn't say it starts in the womb. No, it doesn't. It starts with the mother's mind before conception. Not. Not when he's in the mother's womb. How his mother thought when she was in her mother's womb and when she went to schools. And now she what conceives him. 
nine months. Then he goes to school. He lives, watch t TV. So now he's 60 years old, he got a free mind. He said he don't need etymology. <laughs> that he can, he can know connotations and deceptions and he just meditates. He can meditate himself out of, please. Because you're not gonna think outside of the box. You're not going to think outside of deceptive, distorted meanings. That's what you, because you think that's your reality. This is, I got to talk this. It's very important. We got to first know that we're in a box. Now people will say I'm in a box, but they don't know what the box is. Identify the box. They just say, Box. Identify the box. I'm identifying the box. You got do imagery, do words, terms. So the European colonists make sure. And the fact that he was calling it out beyond white <laughs> means what? He's in the box. Thinking that white refers to complexion and black. The fact that he was saying that he's black, I mean, he's in the box. All right? We have Dr. King. Bet to the mountain. I have a dream that one day that my four little children will live in a nation where they not be judged by the of oh. their skin, but by the content of their character. Sorry, Dr. King. <laughs> Color ain't got nothing to do with this weird skin complexion. See that? He's in the box, he's in the box too. Color has nothing, you read it, to do with complexion. Now, why the box? The, to usurp your power to usurp your national government sovereignty by getting you to agree that you're colored. Get you to agree to an artificial status and you don't even know it because they condition you to think that refers to complexion. Yeah, I gotta say I'm colored. <laughs> see, we're colored people. Mm -hmm. I got color. See, colored people. Deception. And the word means deception. I conceal the legal meaning. Artificial, assimilacum, distinguished from that which is real. That's the legal. So the etymology of the word is related to its, to its legal meaning. The legal meaning and the etymology of the word has nothing to do with complexion. The legal meaning of the word color and the etymology of the word color has nothing to do with complexion. I'm standing on that. Being your best scholars in Harvard, Yale, I don't care who you been. I said the legal meaning and the etymology of the word has nothing to do with complexion. And yet you say it relates to complexion. On what basis are you saying that? On what basis are you saying that the word color means complexion? That when it's a legal meaning and it's true meaning, reads otherwise. Then that's your opinion. No, no problem. Here's the etymology of the word, which is not my opinion. And here's the legal meaning of the word, which is not my opinion. You say my opinion. Now how's that my opinion? All right, any questions? You got a question though. You yeah, trying to formulate it. Yeah. Um, either how, I guess, how was it that 
English was I've inserted into the culture mm -hmm. since people weren't speaking that before mm -hmm. or good question was mm -hmm. for instance like with color and they you know will beat some people until they finally accept calling themselves color and then mm -hmm. that just becomes mm -hmm. what that is but it is it once there's a, a certain strong um, basis or foundation that people are, are going with that, mm -hmm. that that's where they get away with now bringing other word uh, creating connotative meetings with other yeah the connotative that's meetings that's, that's, in, that's taught in the schools that's taught in movies documentaries newspapers magazines um those are the main radio shows, TV shows. But that's not the real. No different than there's millions of people. Millions. 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 They'll say, oh, that's a twenty dollar bill. Millions. Now my question now ask me the same question. <laughs> Millions, millions, those who will say that this is money. I can show them in law that it's not. I stand on law and prove my point. What are they going to stand on? I'm going to stand on law to prove my point that this is not money. What are they going to stand on to challenge me? You want to give it up? All right. No, I'm saying. <laughs> now, what are they gonna stand on to prove the 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 say to challenge me? Here we go. Congress shall not make anything. Congress should have the power to coin money and to determine the value thereof. Congress should have the power to coin money and determine the value thereof. The states shall not make anything but gold and silver legal tender for the payment of all debt, public and private. Now show me in law and jurisprudence that this is money. Show me that this is a $20 bill. I forget your name again. You the net. Yes, you can email me. Look up the word dollar. Look up the word dollar. Once again, schools. The Rockefeller Board of Education. Rockefeller took over. Rockefeller established the General Board of Education. And that, the Rockefeller's General Board of Education was, and there he said, well, there, we have too many lawyers and scholars and writers, and we just need to have people work in factories and, you know. So the Rockefeller General Board of Education, all right? This was in the early 1900s, 1902. 1902. Also, over 100 years ago, about 110 years ago, judges used etymology to adjudicate decisions. Why not now? Why then and not now? I said, that's a wonderful, great question. Yeah. Why then and not now? Why do you use etymology to adjudicate decisions then but not now? In the 19, early 1900s, your great great grandparents was walking around jingling jingling. They ain't no paper in their pocket. Jingling jingling. Gold and silver. That was common. 